Thank you, Carrie May. As tight end for the Baltimore Ravens, Benjamin Watson might not be your typical pro-life leader, but this incredible athlete, husband, and father is a true embodiment of the power of one. Please welcome to the stage Baltimore Ravens tight end, Benjamin Watson. Hey, hey! Are y'all cold? I am too. Hey, it's an honor to be here with all of you. This is a beautiful sight to see. Hey, many people wonder why this is important to us. And I'll say this, the answer is simple because I, like you, hold life in high esteem. But even beyond that, this is important to me because of three things I've dedicated my life to. The book of Jeremiah chapter 9 verses 23 says, Thus says the Lord, Let not a wise man boast of his wisdom, and let not the mighty man boast of his might, let not the rich man boast of his riches, but let him who boasts boast of this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For I delight in these things, declares the Lord. As a man, as people created in God's image, my desire is to delight in the very things that my creator does. So as we rally and march today, let us remember three things. First, let us remember the power of loving kindness, that we may comfort the men and women who have made these decisions willingly or under duress, that pro-life will not only be a political stance or an argument, but a way of life for all of us. <laughs> to be pro-life should be all-encompassing. From conception to the grave, standing for life includes victims of sex trafficking and abuse, the hungry, the poor, the disadvantaged, as well as the elite. Secondly, let us remember our commitment to justice, that those who take innocent life be held accountable, accountable and that these lives will never be forgotten under the guise of choice. That we stay the course on days when the fire inside us burns, as well as days when the ember flickers. In many respects, this battle may seem never ending, but never forget that the goal is worth the effort. I stand with you in defense of the voiceless, the preborn, which are our most precious gifts. Thirdly, let us remember the call to righteousness, knowing that we ultimately answer to a higher calling, and that no matter what we have done in the past, Grace, which is my daughter's name, Grace is sufficient to cover our many faults. In a time of relativism, we must remain convinced that truth is greater than any trend. And because of this, we are compelled passionately to engage our culture without compromise. Now men, are you men out there? Men. Men, it is past time that we be the leaders, caretakers, and providers that we were meant to be. We as men must stand up for the lives of the innocent and their mothers in crisis. Hey, as important, as important as women have been in championing this cause, you men, us men, must rise up and lead the charge. Even if it wasn't demonstrated for you by a father, you can be different. You can change the course of generations. Men, we can be silent no more. Looking out, I see a sea of collective humanity, but looking closer, I see individuals who have their own spheres of influence. This is the power of one. It is the power of influence to influence people in our neighborhoods, in our churches, in our workplaces, on our teams. It is also the power to unite, as we have today, 
as one for a common cause to end the unthinkable practice of abortion in the United States of America. Thank you for marching. And again, this I see is a beautiful sight. God bless.